I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years, I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now, I want to help you fix the money thing. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, wants to mentor you in the kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie, Fixing the Money Thing. So can I share something radical with you today that I'd like you to consider? It is a radical concept that goes against how we're raised in the earth curse system which is to hold on to money. Look at Luke chapter 16 with me. In Luke chapter 16, you're going to find a story, a parable, if you will, which is an analogy that I think will touch all of this. I know it speaks to me every time I look at it. In the analogy, the rich man Jesus talks about is God. So let's look at verse number one. Jesus told his disciples, there was a rich man whose manager was accused of doing what? Wasting his possessions. Whose possessions? So let me ask you a question today. Do you want to handle just what you're able to do? Or do you want to handle God's money as well? Because this manager was accused of wasting the rich man's possessions. So he called him in and asked him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be manager any longer. This gives us a lot of clues. God is going to help people prosper or give them responsibility in the financial arena that he can trust with that assignment, all right? So this guy's losing his job. The manager said to himself, what shall I do now? My master's taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do, he says. Uh, when I lose my job, I have a plan so people will welcome me or he'll get another job. He'll gain favor with people. So he called in the companies or the, the manager, the rich man's debtors, people that owed his company, the, who owed the rich man money. And he asked the first man, how much do you owe my master? 800 gallons of olive oil, he said. The manager told him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 400. Stamp, paid in full. What's he doing? He's stealing from his boss. He's still dishonest. He's stealing from his boss. So he'll have favor with those guys. If those guys are impressed by his integrity, I think they have a problem too, don't you? If they're going to hire him. <laughs> the manager said, okay, it's paid. The next one said, I owe 1,000 bushels of wheat. Take your bill and make it 800. All right. Now, this is interesting. The master, the rich man, commended the dishonest manager when he found out this was going on. He commended him because he had acted shrewdly. Or that word could mean cleverly or that he had a plan. Basically what the rich man was saying was, you gotta be kidding me. You had the capacity all along to create profit. You sat down and you figured this whole plot out for your prosperity, but you did not care about my prosperity. You did not figure a way out to prosper my agenda, prosper my assignments, right? You follow me? And so the, man, the manager commended him because he had the ability, but he wasn't using it for the right purposes. He was wasting his possessions. Now, again, the rich man in the story is God and his kingdom. Jesus drops down to verse number 10. Well, if Jesus didn't drop down. We're going to drop down to verse number 10 <laughs> and pick up what Jesus said. Whoever can be trusted with very little can be also trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much, will be, not maybe. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? Friend, this is, this is, this is vital. What would happen if you radically changed your motive for prosperity? Instead of letting the earth curse system dictate to you that it's for you, only you, to build your kingdom, to build your security, that you changed your agenda and you signed up to be one of God's managers. In other words, you, you can, it's your choice. You can manage what you have, what your ability is. For most people in America, they're living paycheck to paycheck in debt, not doing so well, obviously. What would happen if God helped? You think God could help you prosper? You think he knows everything? You think he'd give you wisdom and divine appointments, concepts and ideas. You know, we started our business by having a dream in the night. 
That business is still functioning almost 30 years later, still producing hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, 30 some years later, by a dream. What would happen if God helped you? Think he could do that? Think he has the ability? Why don't you make God your partner? See, God is looking for partners because he is in the people business, as I said, and money is necessary in this realm, but you have to qualify yourself to be one of his managers. This guy did not because it was all about him. If you qualify yourself, you understand that it's kingdom mindset. Now, God wants you to have a house, a nice house, cars, and all those things. He just doesn't want those things to be your idol. He wants to be your source, not those things. Amen? He wants you to understand that. Extravagant giving. It's a radical idea. A radical idea. I always say there's no freedom without financial freedom. Really, I believe that. You have to have money in life. We've said this the entire series, haven't we? One man gives and increases. That's what God says. How he does it, you don't have to know. He, just, he is your source. One last scripture, Luke chapter 12, just a couple pages back. Jesus is talking about the things that we need in life. Let's put that on the screen, verse 22. Jesus said to his disciples, therefore I tell you, do not, what? How much do you think about money? In the earth curse system, it's a system of survival. How much do you think about money? Either gaining money, protecting your money, what things cost, can I afford that, I can't afford that. Oh look, gas has gone down one penny. Everything, if you analyze what you think about, how much do you think about money? The earth curse system. Is there an escape out of that system? Let's see what Jesus says. Jesus said to his disciples, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. Now, before this, he's talking about serving God. You can't serve both God and money. Therefore, because you can't serve both, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Now, if I just told you as your pastor, hey, don't worry. If you're hungry today, just don't worry about it. Would that fix that? It wouldn't fix it, would it? What would fix it? This is a real spiritual answer. What would fix it? Someone said it. Food. That's right. Food would fix it. So Jesus is telling us there's a way not to worry about your life, what you'll eat or about your body or what you need in life. And what is it? Having it. Are you with me? There's another system. He's about to teach them another system because if I just say not to worry without giving you the other system where you know how to get your needs met, you're, you're still worrying. Jesus says, don't worry. There's another system. Let's move to the next verse. Do not be afraid, little flock. Why is he saying do not be afraid? He's about to tell them their answer, but it does not make sense in the normal earth curse system. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Is God against you having possessions? Absolutely not. In fact, a few verses before this, he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things the world runs after shall be added unto you. He doesn't want the possessions to be an idol. He'll explain here in a minute. Sell your possessions, give to the poor, provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will not be exhausted. Let me ask you, now I have a wallet, you gals have a purse, but if I had a million dollars in the bank, I left my wallet at home, I would have the capacity to operate in buying and selling the same as a pauper would. I would not have the ability to access my estate, is that correct? So Jesus is saying, provide a purse for yourself, an access point to heaven's wealth by giving. As you give, it allows heaven to invade your life and to bring answers financially, ideas and concepts. God gives seed to the sower and it doesn't wear out. This system, God's system, is not tied to the natural earthly system. It's his system. I mean, Peter found his tax money in a fish's mouth. I mean, how weird is that? Right? I mean... So his system works, and he says, don't be afraid, because fear, I always take many times, it takes more courage than faith. When it comes to giving, as Mike and Stacy said, you have to make the decision to say yes and obey. It's that simple. What does God say about finances? You've tried it your way. Why don't you try it God's way? It's pretty simple. Nine years we lived hand to mouth. We had to learn these principles. 
God gave me the dream of the night. He began to give us ideas, revelation, insight on how to prosper. And that's what he wants to do for you as well. He's no respecter of persons. We have a lot, a lot, a lot of families we could tell stories after stories that have applied these principles. So I may say, Pastor, that sounds really good. Now you have to walk it out. Did you catch that? You have to walk it out. It's not mailbox mentality. It's not just going to show up. You, you have to follow what God shows you to do and do it. In Luke chapter 4, Mike also mentioned this. I mean, not Luke 4, 2 Kings chapter 4. Mike mentioned that, what do you have? Remember he said, what do I have? Now their expertise was in bodybuilding and fitness and gyms. And uh, that's where they came from. That's the experience they had. And interesting enough, God led them to uh, a contest. In 2 Kings chapter 4, we find a lady who was in debt. Her husband died and her two sons were being taken to slavery. And this was in the, the time of Elisha the prophet. So she went to Elisha. Her husband worked with the team there. Verse number one, the wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, your servant, my husband is dead and you know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditors coming to take my two boys as his slaves. And please pay close attention to verse number two. Elisha said to her, how? Can I help you? Tell me, what do you have where? In other words, what do you have that God can multiply? What do you have? And you, you might say this, if you're here today, you might say this, your servant has what? I, think, I don't have any talent. I don't have any money. I have, what do you think I'm here for? I'm asking for help. I don't have anything, but you do. You do have something. And the Holy Spirit will show you what that is. And her answer was as she was obedient to the specific directions that the Holy Spirit gave through the prophet, she was able to pay all of her debt off and have more than that to live on. That's basically how it works. Now the choice is yours to say yes and obey. It's that simple. Say yes and obey. God's no respecter of persons. Now, as your pastor, my desire for you is the same as John said in 3 John verse 2, above all else, above everything else, John says, I wish, I desire that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. 3 John verse number 2, above everything else, I wish that you'd prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Because when you're sick, you don't do so well, and when you're broke, you don't do so well. I wish above everything that you can be effective in life, being healthy, having your financial needs met as your soul is prospering in the kingdom. And that's my wish for you today as well.